What's going on everybody? Noah with Madison Angling. Welcome back to Shop Talk where we talk about fishing stuff, boat stuff, you name it, whatever you guys want to talk about, we're going to talk about it. So today's video is a sad video and I apologize for the lighting. It's kind of gloomy today, kind of windy today, so I apologize for that. But today's video is kind of a bummer because we're talking about getting the boat ready to put away for the winter. Fortunately, my boat doesn't sit that long and Normally, I'm not putting my boat away until the end of December, but looking at the extended forecast, things are gonna get real cold real quick, so there's really no point in, in keeping it out. So um, when things get cold, things break. I've already had one thing happen with my big motor here. Recently, uh, my air compressor failed. So for those of you maybe not familiar, Optimaxes have an air compressor that's part of the fuel system that basically uses a combination of a fuel injector like you have in any other fuel injected engine and an air injector. The fuel injector feeds into the air injector and they shoot at the same time, they go poof, and that jet of air atomizes the fuel, gives you better fuel burn, a little more power, a little more efficient. So anyway, there's an air compressor that runs that. It's up underneath here, it's actually this guy right here. And it decided to murder itself. And fortunately I caught it before it became a big problem. Um, here's a couple little pictures here. That's inside of the compressor. If you look real close, ooh, metal shavings. Not good. If that makes it into your oil system, that's not good. If that were to make it into your air injection system, that's not good. There's a lot of reasons why that's bad. But anyway, um, I've been down for probably about a week or so working on parts. Uh, in fact, I need thermostats and stuff as well. Waiting on those, hopefully those get here tomorrow. Um, anyway, long story short, we're putting the boat away. I'm gonna run through some of the things that I do to make sure that my stuff is ready to rock. First thing in the spring when I pull it out, my boat doesn't sit very long, fortunately. It only sits for a couple of months, so there's some steps that I skip that other people who let their boat sit longer should probably follow, and I'll touch on those as well. So let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so the cowling's already off the motor because I was monkeying around with the thermostats and stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and start right here on the motor. So one of the first things that I do uh, with winterizing is obviously stabilizing the fuel. And that's something everybody should do, um, especially if for whatever reason you do have some kind of like an ethanol fuel in your motor or in your fuel tank. Try to avoid it, but there's some cases where you just can't. So having a um, additive like Stabil, or if you have a Mercury, um, you can do Quick Store. Uh, I believe that's what that's called. Uh, basically the Mercury equivalent to Stabil. Put that in your fuel tank, go add some fuel to the tank. You don't wanna put it away with, with nothing in it because then gaskets dry out, seals dry out. But make sure that you add your fuel additive first, then pump uh, some gas into your tank. It agitates, mixes, and then as you're trailering, it mixes, and then run your motor. So if you're able to, take your motor, go, go, go for a ride, go for a boat ride. Make sure you work that fuel through. If you can't, you can always hook it up to the hose, clamp your, um, you know, your hose device, your muffs, whatever, to your lower unit, run it on the hose 10, 15 minutes or so, try to work that stabilized fuel through your system, should be good to go. Now, this is a fuel injected engine, uh, on a carbureted engine, uh, you can actually add that stuff straight to the float bowl of your carburetor if you want to. Otherwise, just running it through your fuel system is a good way to do it. Uh, another thing, you probably saw the bottle sitting here, gear lube. Uh, always, always, always change your lower unit fluid. Uh, and I did it on both my motors, my kicker and my big motor here, before you put it away. The reason being, water is a non-compressible substance, which is why if you hydrolock a motor, that's a bad thing. When it freezes, it expands, and there's not a lot of room in there for things to expand. So you crack gear cases, you blow seals, bad, 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 bad. Not fun stuff when you're trying to get your boat rolling right away in the spring. So uh, if there is any moisture in there, um, you're, A, you're flushing it out, right? And B, now you know that somewhere in your lower unit you have a bad seal. There, There's water getting in, that's not a good thing. And it's the end of the year, so you might as well just unbolt your lower unit, take it in, get it fixed, or if you're kind of a handy person, fix it yourself, get a get a seal kit or whatever, rebuild it, then you're good to go for the winter. But that is a very, very important thing to do. It also gives you a chance to look for metal shavings. If your um, gears aren't lined up right, gears are chewing on each other, um, you know, obviously that can get in your seals, bearings. This is a good time to be able to check for any wear and fix it. And if you drain your stuff out, Everything looks fine, there's no water in it, no metal shavings, fill it back up, get all the air out, seal it up, done, ready to go. So we've got our lower unit done, we've got our fuel stabilizer in the fuel. 
Uh, we've ran the motor, everything's good. Um, fogging. Now that's something that some people may skip and some people may not skip. So there's some motors uh, that fog themselves. So like Evinrud e -Tex, they actually fog themselves. Essentially, it's just a, a over oiling of the cylinders essentially is what's happening. It's a direct injection motor, same with the Optimax and it shoots oil in as needed. So basically on an E-Tech, there's a couple little beep boops you do with the, the throttle and shift linkage and stuff, and then it'll automatically go into winterization mode. It'll run until it fogs itself and then it shuts off and you're done. So essentially fogging is um, adding some kind of oil uh, into your cylinders that is going to provide some corrosion protection essentially, because it's a it's a two stroke motor. Um, they're, they're open basically, right? There's no valves, it's just, you know, air and fuel in, exhaust out. So there's always a little bit of air that can move through the motor. And depending on how long you're storing your boat and where you're storing your boat, it could be susceptible to corrosion. So that's why uh, fogging your motor is a good idea. Now, in my situation, my boat only sits for about two months and it sits in a very climate controlled space. I don't have to worry about humidity. So I'm not real worried about fogging this motor, but if I did fog it, all you have to do, and this motor anyway, is pull the spark plugs so we got one two three on each side of so v6 pull your spark plugs and spray with an aerosol can fogging oil in your cylinders and if you want you could even shoot it into your air intake basically anywhere that corrosion could happen with the internals of your motor generally speaking it's it's not something that is going to hurt your motor uh, if it sits for a couple of months it's not a super big deal but if it's in a moist environment a corrosive environment or it's going to sit more than about two months probably a good idea to fog it so that is uh basically the, the quick one two three of winterizing uh your motors kind of the quick and dirty at least that's how i like to do it all right so we got our motor stuff figured out let's talk about some stuff that most people don't think about going into winter and that is trailer maintenance yes Trailer maintenance, uh, and, and what do I mean by that? The biggest thing for me is bearings and seals as well as your tires. So obviously it's gonna be sitting for a few months, not moving. Uh, this is a good time to check your tires, make sure that your tires are in good shape, everything looks good, and it's a good time to replace your tires because you know it's kind of the off season, right? You're not going anywhere, you don't need to use the boat. Now is a good time, a little bit of goop on my wheel, um, to take care of that, get it addressed. It doesn't have to happen today, but over the course of the winter, you have time to work on your boat and fix stupid little things like tires. So on mine, um, I actually just replaced that tire because it had some weird wear to it. That one looks fine. Uh, but another thing that I like to look at is actually um, the bearings. So on this particular boat, um, this has a, it's called a vault hub assembly. So basically it's uh, a hybrid grease and oil that lubricates the bearings inside the hub and it's a sealed system. So it's not something that you service annually. This is something you service every handful of years or as needed. So if your hub goes bad, obviously you replace it. Uh, if you notice things are getting hot, you have a bad bearing, then it's time to service it. Or every couple of years, just tear it apart and fix everything up, replace your hubs, bearings, all that stuff, and just be done with it, which is what I'm gonna be doing. So um, the reason I say now is a good time to do that is again, water. Where do trailers go? They go in the water, they get wet. And if you have bad seals, water makes it inside of your, your hubs. And what does water do? It freezes, expands, and you do all kinds of nasty things with your hubs. So now is a good time to make sure you flush all that stuff out. If you have just a traditional um, hub assembly that you just put grease into, now is a great time to just grease everything up, work all that old grease out, any trapped water, get it all out lubed up, ready to go. And that's just one less thing you have to worry about in the spring when you're itching to get your boat out and take it fishing. So tires and hubs on the trailer, make sure everything is looking good. If it's not, fix it over the winter. It doesn't have to be today, but get it done over the winter so you're not down in the spring. All right, so done with the trailer stuff. Let's hop in the boat, show you guys a couple things that I like to do here on the inside of the boat for winterization purposes. I don't know why this is zoomed so far in. There, that's better. All right. So, uh, you'll notice my boat's actually pretty clean. It's normally not this clean, but it's pretty clean. So, I pull all of my stuff out of the boat, everything, absolutely everything. Every lure, every rod, every reel, every piece of life-saving equipment, absolutely everything is out of the boat. All of it. Um, I've never had problems with mice until about three weeks ago, and my boat sat for literally five days, maybe, basically during gun season. And I came home and was like, all right, let's get this ready to put away. The forecast was looking kind of poopy. 
and there was like mouse bad words absolutely everywhere <laughs> like every compartment every, i mean it was like it was bad so i've never ever ever had that happen before especially like sitting in my driveway so um that is why you take all your stuff out so they don't eat your expensive rain gear they don't eat your life jackets your throwable uh your plano boxes all that stuff so um what i do to deter them is this stuff and you could get these anywhere you can get them at a hardware store you can get them online fleet farm farmer fleet whatever i got these on amazon basically it's a little effervescent um packet if you will um basically it's just some sawdust with a bunch of different like pine and cedar oil some citrus stuff um it's all natural so it's not gonna stain anything not gonna hurt anything but i put those in my compartment so i got one in my rod locker here um my bow storage got a couple rod holders in there so uh basically anywhere that critters of any variety could get into your boat uh, i throw a few of those in there uh these particular dudes these pest block whatever uh these are supposed to be good for i think a month or so anyway they're they're good for 10 square feet so basically any compartment in your boat one's gonna be plenty if you do more than one it's a little overkill so i'll put one under the cowling of each motor my big motor and my kicker to keep things out of my motor i also like to stuff some crap in my propeller so mice can't get in the exhaust um that'd be kind of gross when you start it in the, in the spring and mice go flying out of your prop that's not cool so uh other stuff that i got going on on the inside of the boat here um i've got everything unplugged um you know my my graph is off the boat um all my electronics in fact my trolling motor isn't on the boat either i got some work i need to do on that over the winter uh, i do leave my boat plugged in over the winter um i do however flip my breaker so on pretty much all ranger boats and most boats like them there's a breaker main power breaker so we'll flip that basically there's just power going to the big motor so i could start it in an emergency but all my accessory switches are off and in the floor of my boat where my trolling motor batteries are there's another switch right down there bottom left and i also throw a little effervescent pack in there but i flip that off make sure that is um shut off my charger is working we're charging the batteries i do run lead acid batteries in my boat so i keep it plugged in over the winter so it trickle charges everybody's happy uh you can take them out of your boat especially if you don't have a way to plug it in and maintain them um i've, I've done it both ways fortunately my storage situation has always been pretty good as far as being able to keep my boat inside however if i had to let my boat sit out over the winter especially if it gets really cold i would pull the batteries take them inside run them on a trickle charger every once in a while make sure they're topped off keep them up off the floor keep them somewhere warm and dry should be good to go all right guys well that is pretty much it um i keep it pretty simple as far as winterization goes again my boat doesn't sit very long this is only going to sit till probably february ish and she'll be coming home and ready to go rock some wisconsin river walleyes and uh so to kind of paraphrase go back through real quick what we covered fuel stabilizer make sure you have a fuel stabilizer not just in your fuel tank but run it into your motor so that way you don't have gas just sitting in there right especially if you have a carbureted engine my kicker is carbureted so i want to make sure that fuel in there is stabilized it's not going to get any um gunk or whatever in there messing with my my needles and stuff just make sure that everything is stable all the way through your fuel system all the way into your engines lower units make sure that your lower unit lube that comes out looks good if there's any water or metal shavings drop your lower unit work on it over the winter take it somewhere if you need to otherwise get a new seal kit make sure everything is working okay uh, and that's pretty much it for motor stuff and then fog it if you feel like you need to um, go ahead and fog it i don't have to because mine sits in a very climate controlled space and it doesn't sit very long so i'm not worried about fogging this motor um, trailer check your tires if your tires look crappy replace them over the winter and check your hubs my, i don't need to because mine are completely sealed and i know that they're good uh, but if you have a regular traditional just greased um, hub Regrease it, work any water that got in there out. If you see anything out of place or any seals that need to be replaced, replace them, take care of it now so you don't have to worry about it in the spring. And then as far as the inside of the boat goes, we got our little anti-mouse, little effervescent guys here. 
Um, use mothballs if you want, but they're gross. I like these better. Um, put them in every single compartment of your boat. I even have them in the floor and the build of my boat. I don't want anybody living in here. Um, take all of your gear out, rods, reels, tackle boxes, um, life jackets, throwables, things I can get chewed on, take them out. Just take them out, get everything out of your boat. Basically, I want this boat to look the way it did when it came off the showroom floor. There's nothing in it. Seats, carpet, motors on a trailer, that's it. Uh, my hummingbird is off. I keep that inside over the winter. It does get cold where I keep this boat, so I don't want that thing sitting out getting super, super cold. It can kind of mess with the screen. Um, my trolling motor, I took off because I need to have a little bit of work done on it over the winter. Um, so basically anything that you need to work on or fix or tune up or whatever, this is a good opportunity to, uh, to do that. Do it over the winter. You got a couple months of free time, take care of that stuff. So um, that's basically it guys. I've got uh, some new thermostats coming for my big motor. I know I've got a bad thermostat, so I'm gonna replace that. I might go for a boat ride here tomorrow once I get those new parts in just to make sure my motor's working okay. If you do that, make sure you drain all the water out of your motor. Trim it all the way down. Um, in my case, I can actually use the jack to lower the bow of the boat, lift the stern up, and I can trim my motor all the way down and get all that water out. In fact, you can even fire your motor out of the water just to blow anything out of there. Let it run for a second or two, just crank it, pow, and let all that water fly out, shut it off. Then you know I have water stuck in your water pump and nothing can freeze. So. Uh, that's pretty much it guys and I'm sad but that's the reality of living here in Wisconsin winter happens and that means boats go away so that being said we might do a little bit of shore bang in here um, leading up to ice but I think we're gonna have ice here pretty quick so stay tuned for some ice fishing videos I'm gonna go do some fun ice fishing stuff this winter yeah I said fun ice fishing stuff stuff I want to go do so Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I want your guys' suggestions, questions, comments for this series. Continue dropping them down below. And if you have other winterization tips, drop them down in the comments below. People might like to know what you think about um, winterizing boats. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching this episode of Shop Talk. We'll see you next week.